All right, back on the Young Turks. Uh, Jake, you're Anna Kasparian with you. Uh, we are going to have a fascinating interview for you here. Uh, we're going to talk to Rachel Rabbit White. She's a writer and sex journalist. <laughs> I think I'm using that too much today. All right, anyway, uh, she's written about uh, fertility cl clinics and the discrimination that goes on there. Fascinating. Rachel, welcome to the Young Turks. Hi. Hey, is your uh, middle name really Rabbit? It really is. Well, interesting. Promise. Okay. And how hippie were your parents? You know, being a writer, I took my pen name legally, so I can't. They can't take the credit for that. It's all me. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Now, uh, you actually worked at a fertility clinic, is that right? I did. Yes, I worked at a fertility agency. Actually, we work with the clinics because of the way the laws work. You go through an agency, and the agency pairs with the clinic. So. Okay. So, what was your experience from there in terms of? Who they wanted to take eggs from, and who did whose eggs they really didn't have much interest in. Well, the thing is, is that I got, gosh, I don't know, probably over a hundred calls a day, and I'd say about ninety percent of the callers were black. But we knew that the parents were all white, and they wanted white eggs. They wanted smart, straight, white genes. Wow. <laughs> now, p part of that is unsurprising, right? Um, Right. Because, you know, I, I think that if you were going to have African-American parents adopting, they would probably want African-American kids. I'm guessing, but did you have experience with that? Um, yeah, I mean, the whole time I was there, I don't think an African-American donor was ever chosen, and that's because, I mean, the donors were white, and they wanted exactly white kids. The problem is that, you know, being that most of our callers were African-American, we just started, it was encouraged to just sort of find reasons to deny the applicants even if they should have gone through, just because they were black and we knew that black girls weren't going to get chosen. Oh, uh, that's, it's, it's depressing, of course, in a lot of ways. Um, now, were there other reasons why people got, quote, unquote, weeded out? Well, I mean, I think that the, the biggest one to me that is shocking is that gay donors weren't allowed. Um, so we were told to deny anyone if they were a lesbian. You know, and this I had a real problem with morally. I'm bisexual myself, so I had a really hard time denying people. And I guess it was thought that there's some, <laughs> I guess it was thought that there's some gay gene or, you know, which is not proven. Or it was thought that um, parents just wouldn't take a lesbian or someone who looks like a lesbian. So we were told to deny them. Or someone who, <laughs> no, no, or someone that's my favorite who part. looks like a lesbian. <laughs> that's my favorite part. They're totally straight, but they come in with short hair. They're like, right, oh, no, well, no, you're gone. <laughs> Gone. Well, <laughs> bisexuality was questioned too. So if someone said they're bisexual, would be like, you know, the coworkers would be like, well, let's look at their photos. What do they look like? And when they said that, it meant, you know, do they wear makeup and have long hair or do they not? Uh, that's awesome. But Rachel, uh, we see from your picture here online that you mm -hmm. have long hair, uh, but at the same time you're bisexual. Uh, yeah. So, wow. How, you, would you have made it? I mean, it's a. T but you're white. You know, in fact, your last name is White. That's pretty good. Yeah, you... I know. Well, I mean, that was the thing at the time. All of the, all of my coworkers are like, "When are you going to apply? When are you going to become a donor?" And you know, I've got to say, it's really tempting. It's seven grand a pop. You can do it up to six times. But for me, it was just like the biggest question was, I wouldn't know who would be raising these kids. And a lot of the parents that I saw, uh, I would not be comfortable with helping bring a child into the world for them. I guess. But see, that's an interesting and controversial point too. Uh, why? What, what? What was wrong with the people who wanted to get the eggs? Uh, you know, for because I they mean, could have. You kids. know, they also, to be fair, they went through a psychological screening just as the donors did. Everyone went through a psychological screening, but I think people who are pushing that hard to still get their genes passed on, even after they find out they can't have kids and are still really going, like, they get a little crazy, you know? I think, if anything, at that point, it's time to start questioning that biological urge and saying, is this the best option? Do we really want to pour all this money into this? Um, so, yeah, I think it was just a stressful time, and the crazy just got spilled all over my desk. <laughs> Rachel, I wanted to ask you about something you briefly mentioned in your alternate piece. You talked mm -hmm. about how donating eggs is potentially damaging to a female's body. What exactly does it do? So, here's the thing. That is controversial in that there's not been many long-term studies done on egg donation. So we really don't know what it does to the body. It's really only been around since about 1980s, I'm pretty sure. I'm going by memory here. I think um, early to mid-80s. 
And so we don't follow up with donors. We have no reason to. So there's been no long-term studies. There is a string of theories sort of online, um, and some people have been lobbying for it, uh, that it goes, it could cause cancer. That could be possible. We don't know. The only thing that we can learn about that is looking at infertility patients who take the same medications, and cancer is a risk for them. We don't know if that's because of the infertility itself or because of the medication. What process does a woman have to go through in order to donate an egg? It's actually a very intense process. I mean, first of all, you apply and you go through a very heavy screening. You go through like four screens. If you get chosen, you then have to wait for the parents to choose you. So you could sit in there forever and just never get chosen. Once you're chosen, you go through a month of um, hormonal shots administered by a doctor. After that month of shots, which that's um, pumping you full of hormones so that you, um, you make several eggs to release rather than the normal one egg released each month. Um, once, once you go through that, then you go through the egg retrieval process. That's done vaginally, and it is considered a surgery. Um, women are anesthetized, so they're out. And then after that, that's when it gets um, transplanted into the surrogate mother or the intended mother. And, of course, people are willing to go through that procedure because they get paid big bucks for it. How much does a potential egg donor get paid? They get $7,000 um, per each time they do that, which is, it's a, I mean, it takes about a month or two just to go through the cycle itself. Um, but you can bargain for more money if you're one of those really good-looking, really smart white donors. Oh, so I can make like twenty thousand dollars. Right. No, but yeah, seriously. Maybe could. No, but seriously, I was going to actually get. I was going to get personal on that. Hold on. Now we're talking to Rachel Rabbit White. Uh, she's written about these fertility fertility clinics that she worked at. One of her pieces on Alternet. Her own website is rabbitright.com. Um, mm -hmm. So Rachel um, Casper over here is an Armenian American. Uh, graduated mm -hmm. top of her class. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess she's fairly attractive. No interest in women whatsoever. Okay, so totally straight. Uh, wh what are we talking about? Market value of her eggs. First, is she in? Second of all, what can she fetch for her eggs? I'd say she's probably in. And I think for her, she would probably, if you just found some Armenian parents, you could probably make like maybe 50 grand if you were on Craigslist. Oh, man. Um, but if you're going through an agency, you might not get chosen because you're not white. So you mm. might not even get your $7,000. Mm. So wait, Armenian doesn't quite count? That, that Armenians is... are Caucasian. I mean, does that count? I mean, what does white mean? Do I have to be, like, American, white, white. from Texas? You blonde hair, blue eyes. No, I mean, like, you know, that's, that, those are the big sellers. You know, I, I think I can get a huge value from, you know, because there's, of course, the male side of this is sperm donation. <laughs> because if you got a Turkish couple... <laughs> <laughs> Jake is gonna fetch fifty cents. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, man! I'm double Ivy League, man. I can at least throw down uh, there. That's education. true. That's true. You All want right, a, a kid? <laughs> okay, you want a kid? Double Ivy League, a gut and chest hair. I'm your man. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, so Rachel, I'm gonna get back to you though. Or now, look, you're throwing, you're saying, hey, look, you don't like this, that, etc. It's certainly part of the implication. People choosing based on race. But if you were gonna do it, and they say, all right, your choice, you can get a white donor or an Indian donor. Where are you going to mm -hmm. go? Wait, if, if I was going to uh, be an intended parent and... Yes. I mean, yeah, that's the thing, is that I totally empathize with the parents. I totally get wanting to pass your genes along. I totally empathize with the whole process. I just think that it's worth questioning. I just think that bringing a child into the world is always worth questioning why you're actually doing it. And then once you're at the point where you can't have a child and you're looking to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on eggs, I think it's worth questioning just that biological urge. All right, so because then you, you, because, look, I get it, Be, because I'd have the urge, too. I mean, I'd be like, look, am I going to go randomly off the board and go with, like, Indian or Malaysian or something, or am I going to go with my wife's race, which in this case happens to be Chinese? I'd probably go right. with Chinese. That makes sense, right? Yeah, no, totally. I totally empathize with that. And Yeah, if I were to be an intended parent, I'm sure I would do the same thing. All right, so, okay, we're clear on that. And then finally... Mm -hmm. Uh, you said you were bisexual earlier. I mean, yeah. it's fascinating. So, uh, w w which direction are we going these days? You got a boyfriend or a girlfriend? <laughs> Huger. I have a male partner. Uh, you have a male partner. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. And does he, does he, uh, is he into it? Is he like, hey, you know, that was cool? Is he open-minded? Is he a lib? Or is he like questioning your background? Wait, are we talking about my bisexuality? Yeah. Oh, he's bisexual as well. Oh. Put you on that one, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Now, you want to talk about a lib couple of the world. You see, this is why I ask the important questions. Okay, have you guys uh, at all, like, tr applied to be declared the most liberal couple on the planet? Are we what? I'm sorry. Have you, like, applied to be the most liberal couple on the planet? I don't know. I know. I think we should be. Yeah, because if you guys, if, like, Bill O'Reilly found out about you, there's, like, a 3% <laughs> chance his head would actually explode. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see that. <laughs> all right. Rachel's website is rabbitright.com. That's W-R-I-T-E dot com. Of course, rabbitright.com. And it's Rachel Rabbit White with a fascinating name, a fascinating background, and a fascinating story. Rachel, thanks, thanks so for much. joining us. We really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Okay. Now, Casper, do I ask interesting questions or what? I, I knew that question was coming. <laughs> I just didn't know when. And then we were winding down in the interview, and then you had to pop up with Yeah, it. look, Emma, it's a little old school. I used to do that more back in the day. All right. You know, I had I'm actually glad that you a asked it, because that's your identity. That's the true Jank Uger. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> the true Jank Uger. That's also part of the gene package you get if, if you get, you know, my donation. All right, guys. Uh, we love you. We'll see you tomorrow.